I'm here with Perry, one of the co-owners of uh, Best. It's a great shop, looks bespoke. I wish I was as sharp as this guy here, especially with airline. I'm loving that airline. <laughs> and hopefully when I get fitted up, uh, I'm going to look as good as you. But right. just tell us a little bit about Best. You, you, you founded it. We founded it, yeah, mate. Uh, been doing it seven years now. Uh, the vision that we had when we started it was to have it like the high street, but more unique one-off pieces. So everything we do here is all reworked from scratch. We source our clothes from all over the world. We offer it a much more affordable price than other high streets do um, and that's why like we've got such a big following because a lot of people come to us for unique one-off pieces that was our vision just one-off bespoke good quality even though it's second hand you know it don't really matter this is what I, this is second hand what I've got on now it looks fresh so it's all good man it's a great shop great to be a part of it I love it mate I love that bespoke element we're all different aren't we? we're all different shapes and sizes personalities exactly. and it's great to have something that's unique to you so uh, good on you for that we're going to link back to the studio right now back with you Alex in there with Key Senior Perch and Chev Walker talking all things Bradford see you soon welcome back to the studio uh, I'm here with Chev Walker and Danny Williams from the Bradford Bulls boys all members of the good crew here together. <laughs> How are you? You all right? We're good, thanks, mate. Good you're, to see you. You're looking well, Chef. Great to see you back on the pitch this weekend. Yeah, it was nice to get out there. Um, it's been a while. My old body hanging around and just doing nothing at training, so it's good to be out, back out skip there. Skipper, mate, skipper. You're skipping <laughs> the Bradford Bulls. How, how does it feel to be, be the main man down there? Is he, does he command the respect to the troops, Danny? Um, yeah, he's a, he's a good leader. He's one of the most professional players of the team, so obviously the boy, a lot of the boys respect him. Danny, you played for Bradford Bulls. Um, you've had, you've been around the houses. You've been <laughs> down at Salford. And how you've, you've settled down at Odds. I've been to watch a few of your games. And you've got a great flop over from three metres. <laughs> <laughs> you've scored 15 or so tries. Is it been the season you wanted so far? Um, yeah, I'm just enjoying rugby at the moment. I think um, we're running a bit of a run at Bradford. So as long as the boys can keep playing well and, and I can finish them at the end, I'm happy with that. Yeah, but how, how good would it be end of season if you hammer Lee? At odds, so <laughs> it'd be awesome, wouldn't it? After after what happened first game of the season, yeah, it, it, well, it, 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 it was a everyone, league game. Everyone keeps building towards the league game, but for us, it's we're still striking for that performance. Yeah. So whether it comes against Lee, um, that yeah, might I be the issue. So. But well, we hope so as well. But the big one is um, that middle eight. That's where we're aiming. Um, disregard Lee. It's are you, excited, are you excited for this season? Is it something really different? The format's brilliant, yeah. yeah. Um, it's been exciting from day one. Um, everyone's battling to be in there and um, no one wants to drop away from that. So, again, everyone's just trying to build momentum towards that middle eight and that goes from Super League down to the bottom um, of Super League and then us trying to get back up there. We're all, um, we're all just trying to build momentum towards that, that the mates. Danny, knowing what the quality is like in Super League, you've been a Super League player all your life and well as yourself, Chef, do you think, honestly and on that, that one of the teams from the championship will end up in Super League by the end of it, whether it's yourself or Lee. Do you honestly believe, knowing what, what it's like a full-time environment over in Super League, do you think there's Lee and Bradford have got, got the quality to beat one of those teams across those seven games? Yeah, I do, just, just through playing, just through the um, season. I think, um, obviously, us and Lee are the standout teams in the championship at the moment. And Lee have obviously played against a few Super League teams and done well, so... I think Bradford are right up there as well. So once it gets down to this last, this Super 8s, so I think we've got a good chance. And we've, we've actually seen Danny Williams' nasty side this year, throwing a few punches that we start to see. <laughs> and look at Liam Kerr. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> remember. It's so long ago. There's too much water so under the bridge, yeah. Round two, or one, round two, <laughs> Liam, charity boxing. Fact, let's, let's get it on. Um, Bradford is a club. Um, I work there. Can you believe it's sat me? No, mate, no. It's, uh, it's not the same without you. Rallying the crowd and Mate, you know what I mean. <laughs> crowd, I went up to calling me out while I'm warming up. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing on bench with you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So cheers for Sarah for that. Anyway, got your toothbrush Christmas. Not a problem. Sound. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully one day we're back. Um, I spoke to Robert the week. He's he's working hard down there. Rob Parker as well. It seems like there's a good old Bradford connection back at the club. That's it. I think um, Mark and Steve first have done a good job there. They've tapped in and. Um, they've got people that are passionate about the club um, working within the club so I think doing that um, you bring out the best because they want the best for the club rather than just being a job title and, and just going through the motions they want the club to be back where it is and talking about growing the culture of the club no better way than getting people like yourself coaching and you've stepped into coaching this year how are you enjoying it? Brilliant yeah I'm um, coaching the 16s with, with Lee Beatty who else is also the kit man and the groundsman 
Um, he's clubman, definitely the clubman of the year. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been good. I've enjoyed it. It's been good, great to see the young kids um, grow and develop. And yeah. they've, they've had a couple of sessions now with the first team of the scholars. So they've gone straight from 16 scholarship to chairman of the first team. I think they'll be in with us in the morning. Um, they're in at half five and we're, we're breeding some good professionals. What, what I really liked and something that kind of, I just thought, you know, it's, I know you was, you know, you one of the best mates in the world and I know what you like as a bloke and the states you put on Facebook about the lads, about how hard they'd worked and stuff and the responses you got to that shows that you've had, you've had a great bonding experience with these kids. Oh, definitely. Um, I never thought about coaching until this year. Yeah. Um, done it and I can honestly say it's as, it's as rewarding as playing um, probably now I'm slowing down a bit well slowing down a lot um, <laughs> I don't think you might be yeah. I'll still race you though you, you might beat me now <laughs> uh, no it, it's good to, to pass pass on but also they keep you young yeah. you, keep, you keep you young at heart when you're um, hanging around and trying to be cool and down with them uh, <laughs> but no no it's just good to see them um, starting the journey and, and becoming young professionals well, Lee Breers recently we met him down at Warrington and he said coaching really it, it's kind of put never thought he'd, 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 miss, he'd miss playing like, and he says coaching he enjoys it more than he did playing mm. it's, it's I get that yeah I can get that um, I'm probably not there at the minute but I can I can I can understand that yeah right now we're going to link over back to Bolton where I met an absolute legend today Malcolm Riley <laughs> uh, great bloke serious he, I, I would not like to fight him. He's, he's a scary kind of guy. He's deadly serious. I mean, he once offered me and Bailey out uh, <laughs> when he was at Leeds. We, we were taking the mickey out of him. Uh, we were doing a rowing challenge and he, he pulled his back. So me and Bailey were giving him a bit of a, a, bit of a ribbon laughing and stuff. And he says, I'll, I'll take him off outside now and I'll batter you both. So we, I think we, he actually would now. No, yeah. I and think we, he would now. We piped down. We yeah. piped down. We got out of there. <laughs> well, we're back later on in the, in the studio uh, talking about the championship weekend that was and what's coming up and we've got some great people giving us some insight as well like Andrew Anderson from London and Paul Wood from Feverston. This right now is Malcolm Reilly on Rugby AM. Mal, how are you doing mate? It's, uh, it's middle eight time, super eight time. Are you excited about the new format of the league? Yeah, it'll, uh, it'll, I think it'll uh, be exciting and uh, I think it'll be exciting and, and it's uh, something different. Yeah, you, you're a legend in rugby league terms, you coached at Halifax. Who told you that? Um, Alan Hardesty, Bob <laughs> Baymore. He said, it, it, it's an interesting story. He told us when we did League's Greatest Programme that uh, you were the most competitive uh, person and one of the fittest players uh, he's ever played with or is seen training. Oh, well, Bob did. Bob did, yeah. Yeah. We, we used to have some fun. Uh, he was pretty fit himself, and his brother was, yeah. Kevin. Uh, but we had some... Uh, Grueling sessions. Do you think? Do you think it's it's really important to for a player to to see what see the best that can be? Yeah, it's it's not just about winning. You know, it's about finding out how how good you are and, and testing yourself and pushing yourself to the to the limit. So if you do that, you can't ask any more. Now, Halifax, one of the clubs you coach, they they're the form side in the championship currently, um, looking towards that fourth spot. Can you see them making? top four? Well it's there for the taking isn't it, yeah. you know, I mean they, they've got 80 minutes uh, each game to make sure that you've just, just got to perform, uh, don't leave anything you know in the dressing sheds if you've got to make sure that they um, they do the business. If the table um, stays how it is and you've got Halifax, Sheffield, uh, Lee and Bradford going up into the middle eights and Wakefield, Widnes, Hull KR um, dropping down, can you actually see any team uh, being promoted by the end of the season. I know Lee are pretty strong contenders, but can you see any of them beating the current Super League teams to drop down? Well, it's one thing to perform, like you know, in the Challenge Cup on a one-off occasion yeah. because psychologically you're highly motivated, but it's doing it week in, week out in a in a, a superior competition where you're picking up a lot of knocks, where the intensity is higher. Uh, I'm not sure where where they can justify. You know, um, a Super League position, yeah. but it's there for the taking. Yeah. You know, and if they get the recruitment right and and then prove, you know, then anything's possible. Fantastic, mate. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Now we are filming um, the commercial today, and you can see in the background. We can't see yet, but in a minute, you, Anthony Gellin from the Wigan Warriors will be stepping in to get his photos done. It's a very exciting time for rugby league. 
here with Andrew Henderson, coach of the London Broncos. Now, first question is, is London a viable uh, project for rugby league? Because it's been a while now, people are trying with it, yep. and it's been up and down the crowds. You've been demoted this year's championship. You've taken over the reins. How's it going, first and foremost, for yourself? Oh, personally, um, I'm absolutely loving the role. Gotta, I've got to be honest with you, Simo. It's, um, I'm passionate about rugby league. I'm passionate about playing and coaching. And uh, yeah, look, it's been a fantastic opportunity for me personally. But to, to go back to your original question, do I think it's viable? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I certainly wouldn't have committed to, to coming down to London if I didn't believe uh, in London. Uh, but for me, uh, the biggest challenge for London is um, is to find somewhere they can call home and really lay some foundations and a base for us to build off, mate. And uh, But I do think it can work if we do get that stability it's all good it, what's going to drive it is if you've got a winning team down there yeah and you recently put your boots back on <laughs> yeah. oh <laughs> controversial eh? you return and you, you, you haven't lost the game since you return oh i think we've yeah well we've lost two now mate but uh yeah no it was a it, look it wasn't an easy decision simo yeah. i mean it's not ideal you know it's been a i can't lie it's been a tough year mate it's you know i went down there as the assistant coach and um you know, I thought I'll spend the next couple of years sort of getting right. groomed and developing and stuff like that. And then obviously the changes that happened early doors, I had to then take over as caretaker. Then I got offered the job and yeah. you know, obviously I grabbed it with two hands. I thought fantastic opportunity uh, to take on the head coaching role. And and then obviously with Brad Dwyer getting recalled the Warrington, and he, um, which, you know, fair play to him. He's, yeah, he's been yeah. fantastic for he's him, since, well go- for him yeah, well, yeah. since he's gone back. And um, he's a good kid. And, uh, you know, it kind of left me a little bit short in that hooking role. And I just felt... With us coming into against Sheffield, Bradford, yeah. Lou had a three-week period there, and the way our season was going, we haven't had a great start of the year, mate. We've, we have struggled, um, and um, you know, I just thought I had nothing to lose, and let's get back out there and play. And as a result, it's given us a little bit of guidance and leadership out in the field, and it's helped us to, to win a few games. Um, Looking towards the middle eights, it's you know the, the seasons. It's, it's so exciting. Oh, it's, mate, it's awesome. People are talking about yeah, like, yeah, it's more awesome. Different, it's awesome. Different games. Someone put, pulled me up in the street and yeah. went, oh, you're involved with that rugby league, aren't you? Yeah. Who's going to win it? I says, mate, no idea. Yeah. No idea this no, year. No, it's, I love the new concept. I think it's awesome and it's, um, it has, it's given us a, uh, it's given the game a bit more exposure and like you said, it's exciting. We were just chatting in there before, yeah. weren't we? And, you need I some favours. Oh, we do, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, There's yeah. no doubt about it. I mean, the, the loss to Halifax on Saturday has um, certainly not helped us. Um, and we are now relying on results and we've got to make sure that we win our next four, which is, we've got four games to go. But, but the good thing is, is people are not only talking about the Super League, they're talking about the championship, and then they're talking about the super eights. Yeah. Who's going to win the, the the top super eight? Who's going to win the middle super eight? Who's going? To, you know, there's there's so many talking. Can you see any team actually going up and going down this year? You play uh, this, uh, I think pressure. it is a tough At the one. End of it, do you think anyone's going to be up and down? Well, do you know what? I, I think I certainly think uh, Lee and Bradford both have a have a, have a real good. Uh, sure. chance shot at it you just don't know that's what's exciting about the whole concept right we've got Aussie Kate Lugwood looking over here I think she's going to take you and uh, we're going around from one Aussie to another going down under for the NRL roundup with Jared Coote yeah thanks very much guys now let's get straight into it for another week now the NRL it's another round close to origin it's a bit like a tinder date at the moment you don't quite know who's going to turn up now it wasn't an official origin round so players were eligible but clubs are resting players at this time of year, especially with Origin in mind. So there was a bit of a mix and match of players in the round, but it was still plenty of great action. We'll kick it off with the Sharks taking on the Cowboys. 24 points to 18, the Sharkies getting up. What a game this was. The Cowboys took the lead. They're up 18-0. We thought this game was over. They were going to keep continuing their role of wins and be right up at the top of the ladder. But the Sharks showed some amazing fight back. They were missing captain Paul Gallen, but four second half tries, too good. The Sharkies in that one, storming home to undo the Cowboys' undefeated run, which has lasted so long now. Great work by the Sharks. A lot of young, a lot of old, experienced, tough players there. So we had no doubts they could get the job done. We move on now to the Eels taking on the Dragons. Now, the Eels did great to win this one. Dragons had lost two in a row. We're expecting plenty of stuff from the Dragons. For the Eels, a week of turmoil. Unbelievable. The Parramatta Club, their fans have been blowing up in the media out here, and rightly so. Kieran Foran, one of their star players in the NRL, has signed with the Eels, but there's plenty of talk now about stipulations in the contract and if he's going to come now, have things been broken already and payouts. So he's been given a chance to possibly pull out of that deal. So plenty of pressure on them this week, but they really delivered against a red-hot dragon side. Parramatta coming out and winning this game with some great attacking play. Chris Sandow really playing well. Sammy Radraja on the wing, the Fijian. Unbelievable, those two combining really well. So a great win there for the Eels. 
move on to the Dogs taking on the Storm. What a what game this was. It was at Belmore Sports Ground. Now, this is the heart and soul of the Bulldogs. They haven't played there since the 1990s. They used to play all their games there. Suburban ground right in Bulldogs heartland out there at Belmore. And boy, did they really deliver. It was a packed house in this one. The scenes were unbelievable. The Dogs got off to an amazing start. Three quick tries. They really blew the opposition off the park. The Storm couldn't even keep up. They were missing Cooper Cronk and Billy Slater. As I said, Cooper Cronk, they say, will be eligible and will be fit to play in the third origin. Chose not to play in this one. But what a performance by the Dogs. Their defence was unbelievable. The Storm only scoring right at the end of the game. So great effort there by the Bulldogs. They jumped right onto the sideline near the fans at the end, sung the team song. Great scenes. They say it was a bit like the English Super League, some of the scenes in the crowd with all the chanting in that game. So it's kudos to you guys for the great atmosphere you have at your games. Now moving on to some quick news. Robbie Farah and the Origin game. Well, he's hurt himself in the game just before Origin. Severely in doubt for the game. Michael Ennis is an obvious replacement, plenty of experience, but he has been possibly suspended for one game. He has to go to the judiciary. There is a loophole, though, that the Blues can exploit. If he's not named for the Blues and is named for the Sharks, he can miss the game for the Sharks next week before the Origin game. So a weird loophole there that the NRL hasn't taken advantage of. The Maroons, Josh Papali comes in. There was an injury spot there for them. He's moved in to the squad. He's done it before for the Maroons, so plenty of talk about him being picked. Dylan Napa was one that would just missed out for the Maroons. The young rooster having an amazing game on the weekend, but surely missed out for this one. He's five power I think will be missed. We move on now to finally a bit of news in the English Super League and the NRL. Mossy Masoi signing with the Dragons on a two-year deal. He was a bit of hit and miss, Mossy, when he was in the NRL. Some devastating runs, some great defense, but you didn't see him feature in every single game. So it remains to be seen how he does at the Dragons. But I'm going to run now, guys. It's bloody freezing out here. It feels a bit like a lead summer. i got to go. See you next week. <laughs>